These are the best dropper seat posts that you can buy in 2024 as tested and reviewed by our team of expert shredders. Dropper seat posts are arguably the biggest game changer in the history of the mountain bike. So if you don't have one, want to replace or upgrade your current dropper, then you're in the right place. But before I go any further, why not subscribe to the channel? It really helps us out. Dropper posts come in various sizes, drops and price points, so it's important to get the one that matches your needs. The first thing you'll need to do is to identify the right diameter for your frame. You'll find this on your current seat post or listed under the specifications of your bike on the manufacturer's website. In most cases, this will be either 30.9 or 31.6 millimeters, but sometimes you'll have 34.9 or 27.2 millimeter diameters, so make sure you get the right one. You'll also need to check whether you'll need internal or external routing if going for a cable operated post. Again, most modern bikes will have internal routing where the cable goes through the frame and attaches to the bottom of the post, but older bikes may not have this. Next up, you'll want to work out how much drop to go for. You'll also need to check there's enough insertion depth in your frame to accommodate the length of the post. This can be a limiting factor in the amount of drop you can fit, particularly on bikes with curved or interrupted seat tubes. You want to be able to fit in as much drop as you can, but you also need to be able to get the post the correct height for seated pedaling when it's at full extension. There's no point buying a 200mm dropper if you can't touch the pedals when the post is fully extended. The best way to work out how much drop you can fit is to measure the distance from the seat collar on the frame to the saddle rails and then measure the insertion depth inside the frame itself. Combined with the seat post's overall length, its stack height and the distance from the saddle rail to the post seal head, you'll have all the dimensions you need to get as much drop as you can physically fit in your frame. Finally, you'll need to decide how much you want to spend, as the prices vary an awful lot. A budget dropper can be as little as £100 or dollars, whereas the most technologically advanced wireless posts can cost seven or eight times that. A lot of posts are also sold without the handlebar remote lever, so you'll also need to factor in this into the price equation. Our posts cover a huge range of price points and both cable operated and wireless actuations. So without any further ado, let's check out the best dropper posts currently available on the market. OneUp's V3 dropper posts is one of the best on the market. It feels effortless to use, there are high levels of comfort, plus easy installation and an appealing price. There's a serious amount to like. The VFE dropper post feels fast and precise to return when the trail starts heading upwards and is quick to drop for the descents. It does all this while being one of the lightest droppers on the market. The V3 dropper is sold on its own for £289.99 or $269.99, but we tested it in conjunction with the V3 dropper remote, which is priced at £45 or $45. It's available with between 90 and 240 millimetres of drop in 30mm increments, which can then each be tuned by up to 20mm without removing the post from the frame. It can also be serviced easily with basic tools and has incredibly long 350 hour service intervals, so even then, you don't have to do it very often. Combine the keen price, excellent performance, incredibly easy maintenance, rock solid feel, and those long service intervals, and you really can't go wrong with the V3. RockShox Reverb Access has been out for a little while now and was one of the first wireless electronic dropper posts on the market. It still provides the quick and crisp actuation you'd expect of a top-line product. You also get the benefits of easy installation and less maintenance from going wireless. All this does come with a high price tag, with the Reverb Access priced at £750 or $861 including the wireless remote. Setting up the Reverb Access is as simple as placing it in the bike, tightening the seat clamp and attaching the remote to the handlebars. Easy! The speed of the Reverb Access quickly stands out, with the dropper instantaneously actuating with a click of the remote. This led us to use the dropper more than with cable actuated posts, getting the saddle out of the way for short parts of the trail that we'd usually stay seated for. The Reverb Access remains one of the best dropper posts on the market, with the quick and easy setup and instantaneous actuation making it an absolute joy to use. Downsides are the limited maximum drop of 170mm and that price tag. <music> 
KS's Vantage offers a premium experience without the price tag at just £159 or $189 along with the $34.99 Westie remote. It provides a fast returning and easily actuated dropper post with virtually zero play and you can adjust the post travel by 30mm in 1mm increments. This is done by turning a bolt under the saddle with an allen key and gives the seat post a range of 110 to 140 millimeters, 140 to 170 millimeters, and 180 to 210 millimeters. Out on the trails, we found the Vantage easy to actuate and quick to drop, allowing us to get the saddle out of the way quickly for downhill sections of trail. The post also returns to full extension with good and consistent speed, giving the Vantage a premium feel and reducing fatigue on tired legs. There's really very little negative to say about the post and considering its price, it should be on anyone's upgrade list. We were less impressed by KS's Westy 2.0 remote with the lever itself having a lot of vertical movement and overall feeling very cheap. So make sure you pair the Vantage with a more ergonomic lever. The Lev Circuit is KS's first attempt at a wireless dropper post but it offers impressive performance. Its return speed isn't the fastest out there, but this is made up for with efficiency and consistency. The lev circuit is quick to drop, with the actuation feeling almost instantaneous as the button is pressed. This is on par with the RockShirts Reverb Access and much more responsive than the TransX EDP-01. When it comes to the climbs, the post is a little slower than we'd anticipated. It's by no means slow, but it doesn't have the same haste as the Reverb Access. The lev circuit is also painless to set up, with the post and remote quick to pair using the buttons found on the post's head and at the rear of the remote. However, the remote itself needs some refining. The hard plastic lever offers little grip and poses worries about its sturdiness. It's not as refined as a reverb access, but if you're looking for a wireless dropper, the lev circuit should certainly be on your list. PNW's Lone Dropper offers good performance and plenty of adjustability at a reasonable price. However, it does have small amounts of play between the upper and lower halves. This doesn't take too much away from this otherwise well-considered dropper post low. It's available with 125, 150, 170 or 200 millimeters of travel and sits at the top of PNW's range. Priced at £209, not including the remote, we use the post with the brand's Lone Lever Gen 2, priced at £65. Underneath the post collar, there's tool-free travel adjustment, which is easy to use and allows more flexibility when fitting the post to your frame. On the bike, the Lone Dropper feels quick and consistent. From the first ride though, there was a small amount of rotational plate between the upper and lower tubes, but after a couple of rides, it didn't get any worse. We didn't find this to be a problem when riding, with the movement unnoticeable while in the saddle. PNW's Lone Dropper Post offers premium dropper functionality and feel at a reasonable price point, only let down slightly by that rotational play. This Transex EDP-01 is the brand's first electronically actuated model and is priced towards the bottom end of the wireless dropper post market at just $499. It provides hassle-free installation and feels like a premium product, though the remote quite can't match it, with the vague feeling lever leaving room for improvement. The post itself is available with 150, 170 or 200 millimeters of travel, with the latter being a longer offering than RockShox's Reverb Access. Thanks to its wireless design, the EDP-01 is simple to install, with the post sliding into the frame with ease and the remote tightening to the bars with little fuss. We found the EDP-01 quick to return, but it does feel slower to drop than the other wireless dropper posts on test. There's a small amount of lag between pressing the lever on the remote and the servo activating inside the post. This isn't too noticeable when riding, but it isn't helped by the lever's lack of tactility. Transex's first stab at a wireless dropper post is very commendable, especially for the price, but it doesn't feel as refined as the others on this list. So there you have it then, the best dropper posts currently available on the market, and if you want to read more about each one of them, check out the full written reviews in the description below. And if you want to see a video about five more upgrades we think you should make to your mountain bike, then check out this video. Oh, Hello! There's a doggy! You can go in at the end of the video. Trail dog! <laughs>